With a book like The Retreat, which is actually set at a writer's retreat, did that title come really obviously to you? And are they often early on or late in the process? So it's either that they come immediately, like Because She Loves Me, or The Retreat, or I will spend months and months and months at the end agonizing over what the title should be and roping in all of my friends and, and brainstorming. So they either come like that or they are like childbirth, very painful and very <laughs> intense. <laughs> so the retreat came, that was, I mean, it's a kind of obvious title because it's set at a writer's retreat. And it also has that double meaning of it's kind of somebody retreating from, from their life and from normality. They're, they've they've um, gone to stay at this writer's retreat to get away from everything that's wrong in their life. And they're, they're trying to be able to create again. It's about a guy who's got writer's block, uh, who, um, who, who's struggling to follow up a successful novel and um, and he moves into this apparently haunted um, house in the middle of Wales in the woods, and there's a missing child, and he he gets completely distracted from trying to write his book because he he's trying to find out what happened to this this missing little girl, who is the daughter of the woman who who's running the retreat. Um, so in fact, that title came to me, and I thought, no, that's too obvious. And then I spent ages trying to come up with an alternative title. And finally, the publisher said, no, we like the retreat. That's a great title. Let's just go with that. And so, so I did. But um, yeah, usually it's much more, much more painful than that. And it's so, the, the title is so important as well. Inner Shadow, was that one that came to you right away? No, that was one of the hard ones. And I'm still not 100% happy with that title. <laughs> if I could change the title of any of my books, it'd be that one, but I still don't know what I'd change it to. I don't think it does, it's not quite bold or strong enough. There's something about you've got the retreat, the magpies, follow your home. They're good, strong, solid titles. There's something about in her shadow that just doesn't have that same kind of kind of oomph to it that the others do. You were happy with the book itself though. Yeah, yeah, I was happy with the book. Um, and I would, I mean, just to briefly describe that one, I would say that that book is like the sixth sense meets Big Little Lies. It's kind of school gates, um, domestic, motherhood, and like sisters and, and like sibling rivalry and stuff, but with the possibility that there's a ghost. Um, and this little girl who can who who can communicate with her dead aunt and knows all this stuff about her, even though she never met her. But with all of my books, there's never actually anything supernatural going on. There's always a rational explanation in the end. So the challenge for me is to come up with this seemingly totally inexplicable situation and then try and figure out how how it could happen in real life. Just, and so I didn't know when I started that book. I thought, well, there could be a ghost, but how am I going to make it so there's not really a ghost? Say with a book like Because She Loves Me, do you tend to sound your dialogue out loud as you're writing? A lot of authors I've spoken to for the show do. I do it in my head and I kind of go over it um, lots of times to try and make it sound as natural as possible. Dialogue's hard. I mean, I think probably that was the thing that took me the longest to to um, get good at. Um, and because I think when I first started writing in my 20s, my, the, the dialogue was a bit flat or a bit, it just didn't, didn't sound like real people. So um, I, I practiced that. I practiced that over over many years, and I think that I'm, I think that I'm quite good at it now. I don't, I, I don't know. I, it, it's hard. I mean, when I was writing a screen, when I wrote, tried to write that screenplay, because it's pretty much all dialogue. Yeah. Um, I think that was actually one of the things that made that such a good exercise, just to try and get the story all across from dialogue and to make the characters come to life without being able to see inside their heads. So, I mean, I think that's quite a good tip for people. If writing a novel, try and tell your story through dialogue alone and see whether it works. That's 
it's 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 worth it's worth um worth doing wow so you actually hear different voices for different characters as they're coming to life on the page that's just fascinating hey i'm definitely there picturing the scene when it happens it's it's very it's very visual for me um uh although i don't really see their faces i mm. don't so they're kind of like I, I see the setting i'll see like i don't know the, the the house or the trees or the the street that they're walking down but they're kind of faceless shadowy faceless figures um especially if i'm writing from their point of view because i'm kind of looking out through their eyes i'm not like looking in the mirror and seeing seeing what they look like um but I'm, yeah, I'm there and I kind of hear their voices. But when people say to me, oh, which actor would you like to play this person? Or who do you see them as? I'm always completely stumped because I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I find that a really hard question to answer.